Good evening. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our entrance hymn is number 765, Come Holy Spirit, Wind and Fire, number 765. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, it isn't often that we sing a hymn directly addressed to the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God, but it is the Spirit who makes possible our life in Christ, who communicates to us the gift of faith, and who gives us all the graces that come from Jesus our Lord, including giving us Jesus himself to dwell within us, and Jesus in the Eucharist. Let us now ask the Holy Spirit, with the Father and the Holy Spirit and the, the Son, to look kindly upon us as we now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the readings for this evening begin on page 52 in the Missalette. Page 52. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those who heart, whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into the assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, 
and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here, please. While you say to the poor one, stand there and or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the Tyre, the district of Tyre, and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. You please be seated. I think I was maybe six or seven, maybe a little bit older, when my uh, best friend of the street, uh, a young man my age, suddenly began to, uh, to curse to use foul language. And I, I remember wondering about it and whether that's what one does when one reaches a certain age. Perhaps it's a, a sign of maturity. But I recall that my parents, even in their unguarded moments when I might overhear a conversation, never used language like that. And I'm sure that by that time the Franciscan sisters 
at the Perry School had taught us that we should not use foul or dirty language. And so I remember making a, uh, uh, a decision that I would not use that type of language. And I remember telling my friend that I wouldn't. I'm not sure he cared one way or the other. But for me, it, it was important. And I kept that habit, and for the most part, have kept that habit um, throughout my life, with certain exceptions. St. James, in his epistle, we heard part of it as our second reading this evening from chapter 2 of the letter. In chapter 3, St. James speaks of the tongue, the human tongue, how it has the power to enkindle fire. by which the apostle meant that when we use our tongue inappropriately, it can make other people very angry. And lead to passions that are difficult to quell. We have all had the experience of a person, and especially a loved one, who in a, an unguarded moment says something to us that is deeply hurtful. The tongue has that power. And it is remarkable how we can remember those hurts and dwell on them years and years later. St. James, in the, that third chapter of his letter, says that the tongue is like deadly poison when it is not used as it ought to be and that it is the kind of poison that you and I are helpless to counteract, save by the grace of God, save by cooperation with God's grace that helps us to make the decision to be guarded in our speech. And, of course, to go even beyond that, to be guarded in our thoughts, lest we give the, the evil one scope to act in us and through us. St. James tells us that we were given a tongue in order to sing God's praises, to bless the Lord. And yet, we often enough use our tongue to curse to curse others who are made in the image and likeness of God. And the apostle goes on to say, just as a, a spring that gives fresh water does not give brackish water, so our tongue should be like that spring that always says the things that others need to hear, things that will really help them to quote from St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. We heard that verse a few weeks ago at the Sunday liturgy. Jesus curing the man who was deaf and could not speak or had a, a speech impediment. I think the implication, however, is that he was mute. He could not speak. 
How could he, being deaf? That the Lord, in giving a, a cure, a healing of the body of this poor person, so that he would miraculously now hear and then also miraculously speak a language that he'd never heard before. That the import of that miracle is first of all a fulfillment of what God promised through his prophets. That in the days when God will save his people and vindicate them, vindicate his own faithfulness, that the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf cleared, and the tongue of the mute will sing. And like in the days after the exodus, streams will burst forth in the desert as Moses struck the rock and water flowed out so the people's thirst could be quenched. In the same way, in the days of salvation, God will do this. Here is your God who comes with this vindication. And we see in the person of Jesus and through his humanity, God present and working to fulfill that prophecy and to bring healing to the human person. The physical healings that our Lord performs are themselves types of parables that are lead to lead us to the spiritual healing that the Lord alone can undertake on our behalf. For what good ultimately would it have been to the man to have his hearing when the people around him told nothing but lies? And what good would it be that his tongue is loosed and all he speaks is lies? How is that healing? No, the Lord has come to change and heal our hearts, our persons, so that we might hear and believe not the lies of the evil one, but the truth about God. In other words, that we could hear and receive into our heart through our ears the gospel that frees us and have our tongues loosed, not that we would curse others or curse ourselves or curse God or use our tongue to tear down others, to repeat gossip and rumors and all sorts of things that tear communities apart, but rather to use our tongues to praise God. As the prophet Isaiah said, the mute will sing the praises of God. It's beautiful that our liturgy begins always with a communal confession of our unworthiness. That we all fall short of the glory of God and that we are all beggars before God and also beggars before each other. Why does the church in her liturgy have us admit our sinfulness right at the very beginning and then of course right before we receive Holy Communion Lord I am not worthy to receive you
because it is when we are aware of our true situation that the mercy of God can touch us and heal us. If we refuse, for instance, to admit a, a physical ailment and go to the doctor, the doctor can't help us. It's only when we admit something is wrong that the possibility of healing presents itself to us. There are only a few words in Aramaic, and remember our Lord, Jesus spoke Aramaic, that are preserved in the New Testament, which was written in Greek. One of them, of course, is um, Abba, Father. Another, when that little girl was raised up from the dead, Talitha Kumi, little girl get up. And then there's this word, Ephatha, which we're told Jesus uttered when he looked up to heaven and groaned. He groaned because the human race created in the image and likeness of God is deaf to the word of God and to its truth and power to free us. And that the human tongue is used not for the praise of God and to help others, but to lie, to tear down, and to destroy. And so Jesus groans and says, Ephatha, be opened. Let the human heart be opened to receive the healing grace of God that comes to us in the person of Jesus. Now when I was a little kid and wasn't swearing, I began to think pretty highly of myself and put myself uh, above my companions. So in avoiding one sin I fell into another. <laughs> But God is good. The Lord in all of our lives reveals to us our sins, thereby deflating our false pride, but opening us to receive his mercy, his forgiveness, so that our hearts may be transformed. And that what we hear, what we see, what we speak will all be consecrated to God and to his greater glory and to the good of one another. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. profess our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come in worship before the Lord who made us, who redeemed us in the blood of his Son, and we now offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father for our needs and those of the whole world. Our response is, grant our prayer, O Lord. For the papal intention for September, that we, will, that we all will make courageous choices for a simple and environmentally sustainable lifestyle, rejoicing in those young people who are resolutely committed to this. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. That the actions of those who govern and legislate will imitate the Lord who is just in all his ways. We pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For our nation on Labor Day, that our work will be directed to God's glory and that the unemployed will obtain sustainable work. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For all the prayer intentions of those we serve through our food pantry, for the poor, for all those who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Grant, Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For those preparing to receive the sacraments, for faithful marriages, and for an abundance of religious vocations, we pray to the Lord. Grant our, our prayer, O Lord. For all those who suffered as a result of Hurricane Ida, we pray to the Lord. Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For the elderly, the terminally ill, for those suffering from mental illness and addiction, and all who are sick, that the Lord may free them from sin and temptation and heal their infirmities. We pray to the Lord. Grant our, Grant prayer, our prayer, O Lord. For all our beloved dead, especially Father Kerry Hill, that the Lord will welcome them to the table of God's children in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Grant our prayer, O Lord. And for those special prayers which we bring before the Lord this evening. We pray to the Lord. Grant our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Loving Father, in your great mercy, hear our prayers and hold us close to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our second collection this evening is for the Catholic University of America. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for helping out with confessions this evening and for all you do for the parish. Many blessings. Thank you. Blessed are you, the Lord of all creation, for through your goodness you have received as we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. We administer this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself. 
Blessed be you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work it in your hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we have accepted by your Lord, and your sacrifice and your sight, which now be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord, amen. And this mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Bridget McDermott. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exult and praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Save us Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrifi sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Hugh of Grenoble and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 
I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We thank the Lord on this Labor Day weekend that we are able to gather together to praise God's name and to ask his blessing upon all who labor in this world. The September Share Food menu is in this weekend's e-bulletin. Orders are due by next Sunday, September the 12th. Our parish school of religion, which serves our parish children who do, do not attend Catholic school, begins Sunday, September 19th, after the 9.30 a.m. Mass. Parents, please register your students as soon as possible. Registration forms are available on the tables near the main entrance, on our website, or by the link in the e-bulletin. For more information, please contact Mrs. Rohani Bacchus, who is the director of our School of Religion. Her contact information is found in the e-bulletin and on our website. You may also leave a message for her by calling the parish office. An update on our church boiler replacement. Our contractor expects to begin the church boiler replacement project the week of September 13th. The project is anticipated to last two to three weeks. When the existing piping is replaced and insulated, the cooling system will be turned off as both the heating and cooling systems use the same piping. The contractor will work to minimize this framework, so we'll pray for a, a cool September. Uh, due to the Labor Day parade and associated road closures, the daily mass on Labor Day this Monday will be celebrated at the usual time, 7.15 a.m. The parish office will be closed. And now let's pray together our prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage and defend us from every evil, amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, and throne above all love, O Maria. Triumph, all ye cherubim, sing with us, ye seraphim, heaven and earth resound the hymn, salve, salve, salve. Our final hymn is number 959, Make Us True Servants, number 959. Make us true servants to all those in